All right, it's us, Terry. Now we had planned for another uh, another one of our coworkers, Tim Allen, to join us. And I apologize for those of you who are excited to see Tim Allen, not that Tim Allen. Um, but, yeah, uh, it's always a disappointment on the on the phone when you get the call. Oh, this Tim. Yeah, this Tim yep, Allen. Yep. <laughs> but we do have a coworker named Tim Allen. He's a wonderful man, good guy, great friend, and uh, unfortunately, he is under the weather and will not be able to join us. But we're fully prepared. And um, the reason that we wanted to have Tim on, and we will have Tim on in future sessions, is because he recently was managing a very successful, I would say, medium to large screen printing facility here in Arizona. So he's really walked the walk recently. But, but the good news, my good friend, co-worker, Terry Combs, a seasoned veteran of screen printing. Uh, and I mean, Terry, is it fair to say over 35 years? Am I being... Yes, Maybe, Jay, is that I, think you're, I think you're probably looking at about, uh, let's see, it's 2022, so 43 years. I did start screen printing in a previous century. <laughs> wow, I love that statement. And uh, so we welcome everybody who's joining us. A few more are trickling in. Thank you again. This is another Equipment Zone training webinar, and we have a specific niche today. I think it's a really important niche. Um, we're going to be answering a question you know, really why add DTG printing, but we're going to point it towards apparel decorators and even more specifically screen printers. So while we might answer some broad topics for everybody, we will also try to answer some, some specific screen printing type questions. And who better to join us than Terry and Tim? Sorry, Tim won't be here, but now Terry. So uh, Terry, welcome. We're excited you're here. Well, thanks, Jay. I'm excited. You know, I love talking screen printing. I love talking direct to garment. So looking forward to this. Two topics you love talking about and Kansas Indeed. basketball, but that's for another day. Number one seed. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we are thrilled to have so many folks joining us. And this is going to be a session that's recorded and added to our YouTube channel. So I will share my screen now and you get to see this amazing Equipment Zone logo. Um, and then our topic slide you can see why add DTG. It's one of our uh, webinar series. And uh, we've got a picture of an Epson F2100 sitting right there. Um, but what I did, Terry, differently is I just thought I'd add some of the questions that we reviewed. And maybe we can give people a, a sneak peek into the behind the scenes. How did we get here? Um, why why this topic? And, and I'm going to just make a really broad brush statement. I hope I don't step into anything. Um, but but it came to mind because we were we were discussing how many apparel decorators that are currently engaged in screen printing, how often are we seeing them, talking to them, answering their questions, and how often are they are they purchasing DTG printers from us? And I was guessing when we had this conversation that it might be one in four, it might be two in five. I don't know if that's still are those ratios you would still agree with, Terry? That that's about I, or, or or maybe a little more, Jay. I, I think. Um... The screen printers were slow to uh, to adapt to this technology, which surprised me. But but uh, more and more, it, it's it's become a necessity in, in a screen printing shop. But you know, Jay, uh, when I first saw the first direct to garment printer, which was you know 17, 18 years ago now, mm -hmm. I was actually teaching screen printing classes at the U.S. Screen Printing Institute in Tempe, Arizona, and. And the first time I saw it, I thought, man, this is going to be such a <laughs> great addition to every screen printing shop. And, and you know, coming directly from recently running a, a large production facility, and I thought, oh, this is a perfect technology. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and what really happened out there were screen printers were like, say it ain't so. Uh, yeah, this I, isn't I spent, fair. <laughs> I spent 20 years learning my craft and then you could just push a button and do this. Well, that's not entirely true. Uh, you know, it was funny, Jay, too, at, at trade shows, you know, you, you would talk to your screen printing friends, you know, and, and, and they're like, Oh no, no, thanks. And, and then right, the next right. year they came back around and said, I didn't know how many screen printing jobs I turned down because it was, it was five pieces or, or, you know, for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm, and and mm -hmm. I didn't realize how many I was turning down until I saw this technology and had it in the back of my mind every time I said no to a, a screen printing customer. So uh, it, yeah. it, it was a slow transition that 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 boulder's uh, rolling faster and faster down the hill now. That's so interesting, you know, not to go too far off onto a side tangent, but I was remembering in preparation for the session, 
when my my father and his partner had a screen printing company here in Arizona. And we also had a promotional advertising agency as one. So we were doing apparel and promo together. And, and one summer he said, I want you to record something. I want you to record how many times we say no to either a prospect or even an existing customer. How many times do we say no, we won't just print three shirts or two shirts or one shirt. And over the course of a couple of months, I mean, we were approaching 30 times and, and we were all shocked at how often, because if you don't really take note of it, you're just kind of like, yeah, here comes, okay, and another annoying teacher who wants to get three shirts for her three-star students or something like that. Yeah. But, um, you know, we, we saw that as both, uh, we, we couldn't quite solve the, the, the challenge, you know, that was a tough question to get around. And, you know, we looked at sublimation and we looked at a few other emerging technologies, but direct-to-garment wasn't even on the scene 25 years ago. So, all right. Right, exactly. Crazy. And, and, you know, Jay, I think it, it, it's one of those things that uh, in the past, uh, you know, I was a screen printer and this person's an embroiderer and we've talked about it before. Mm-hmm. And, and it's so easy to say to someone doesn't fit our technology, can't do that. And, and yeah. with, without thinking, I'm, I'm, is there an alternative where I where I could take this this order where I could service my customer better? Mm -hmm. It is. And it's a tough question. And it's not a one size fits all approach. There are other technologies out there that people attempt and try and and some are very successful at it. Obviously, for us, and for what we do at Equipment Zone, we're proud to do it as as the leading, uh, I would say, nationwide dealer for Epson, you know, we're we're all in, obviously, I mean, you're not going to get us to get off of the exciting technology of this ink tech, you know, this inkjet technology from Epson and and DTG printing is a big deal. And so anyway, well, you that? know, and Jay, and Jay, just to, yeah. one quick aside, you know, equipment oh, yeah. zone was all in uh, as a screen printing yeah. equipment supplier. Uh, and then about 17, 18 years ago, turned around 180 degrees and went all in with direct garment printing saying, this is the future for equipment zone. And, and, uh, and they were so right. Uh, Harry was so right about that, making that decision. Uh, I tip my cap to Mr. Oster for uh, making that bold decision because uh, he was ahead of the curve and has been involved and Equipment Zone has been involved from the beginning, as you right. said, from the get-go. So have we made some mistakes along the way? Of course we have. Have we learned from them? Yes, we have. And so I think it's been a, 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 an interesting ride so far. Um, Harry, Harry has done a, a wonderful job in assembling a team and uh, keeping ahead of the technology. And so today, you know, like you said, two topics we both love. Certainly you are still an active trainer. I I, I wanna make sure people are aware that this isn't like you used to do this 40 years ago. Um, Terry Combs is an active trainer who has sought out industry leader and a thought leader um, for screen print training. And you, in fact, weren't you just in, was it Chicago or where, where were you just? I was in Chicago two weeks ago, uh, teaching a screen printing class at Atlas Screen Supply. And two weeks before that, I was teaching a class here in Phoenix at Workforce Products. So uh, I, I teach um, eight, 10 screen printing classes a year, sometimes more. So. All right. Well, you are just the guy I had in mind when I wanted to ask this first question, because you've seen it. You have the per- perspective. You have the experience. So, Terry, to the best of your ability, what, what do you think has changed in the marketplace for screen printers? And, and rather than go back in time to you know, 16, 17 years, let's kind of keep it in the last three, four, five years. What's changed sure. over the past five years in, in your mind? Well, well the marketplace has completely changed, you know, and, and, and I, I, I'll repeat it one last time here. It's an Amazon world. You know, I, I, I want I want it now. I want it custom. I want one. Um, it, that's true on the grander scale. Uh, I have friends who uh, who have screen printing businesses where five years ago they were running 10,000 piece orders the, the 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 number of total pieces they print hasn't gone down. It's gone up. But in, in, in smaller bites, that that 10,000 piece customer now says, hey, I still want those 10,000 pieces, but I want them in 2,500 piece bites because I, d- I don't want to have a warehouse full of, of a product that may or may not sell. I, I, want, I want you to be my warehouse garment decorator. And, and, and that's true. It, whether your your average one 48 pieces or 10,000 pieces, that number has dropped down because uh, it, it's it's a different world and and we're not going back. the 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 days of and there are still 10,000 piece orders. There's plenty oh, of clearly. those out there. Sure, sure. but 
but but not like in the past. The 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 way companies do business has changed, and it's changed forever. So again, you know, and you mentioned this in a previous webinar, uh, Jay. The the total number of garments being decorated is skyrocketing, but but the bites are smaller and smaller and smaller. So so that's that's how life has changed yeah. for the screen printer. Because obviously, in screen printing, the more pieces, the more efficient you can be at what you do. Uh, because you don't, you know, you've you've got the whole setup process before you ever print that first shirt. Then once you start printing shirts, the more the better. So yeah, I love that. So and for those of you who maybe missed Terry's, we did a previous webinar on the learning curves and the differences in setup and the differences. That would be a great webinar to go back and watch. But I think of so many times having been there myself that you know you you keyed on a word efficiency, and you know for years and years and years it was never efficient to print just three of something or, or, or even 10 of something, you know, your screen printer today still is looking for a higher yield because they have what so much setup, right? Exactly. So, yeah. And it's, it's amazing. So no, no, no fewer shirt total, just broken down into smaller bite-sized pieces. I like how you phrase that. All right. Well, let's get on then. Anything else to add to question number one, Terry? No, I think that's, uh, I think that, that, that covers it. Um, you know, the, the shorter run is with us now and forever. I, I would say too, I would add to it's, it's been driven primarily, especially through these quarantine pandemic years. Um, those of us who were locked down and those of us who chose to stay at home or whatever our situation was that, that, that it got squeezed. The online buying time frame was squeezed. And I think that the buyer has pushed this as a, as not just a fad, but a trend. In fact, it's not even a trend. It's, it's like the norm, right? Is that, is that a right. good way to no, phrase it? Maybe hundred percent. The, what was happening pre COVID for those couple of years prior to COVID was the, those order sizes were getting smaller already. Uh, COVID accelerated it a thousand times where, yeah. where many, many garment decorators, uh, screen printers, whatever, um, had to go to a to a new model of selling, and and that was selling individual pieces, you mm -hmm. know, on the internet. Thank thank yep. goodness we had the opportunity to be able to do internet stores, things like that. Uh, but that 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 caused the survival of many many garment decorators being able yeah. to do that. One of this, one of that. I love. There were some great stories, and those were some tough days, no doubt. Um, but man, we we made it through, and and and. It was it was a transition for us too. You know, we we had to uh, prepare ourselves for doing everything virtually. So you're right. It just it was compressing what was already in route. It was already happening. We've had these conversations. I remember at a training event we did probably five or six years ago. One of the one of the first ones where I joined you guys in Long Beach. Remember when we used to go to trade shows and we had a whole setup the day before the trade show and we had we covered this. We were talking about this five years ago. So I think it's really really important to see that it's evolving and it's moving faster now, if anything. Right. So, okay. Exactly. Question number two, Terry, why are some screen printers having just said all of that? Why are they still sometimes resistant to this? What's holding them back? Well, you know, uh, there are still that number of screen printers and, and screen printing is uh, it's some, some screen printers like myself have been at this a long, long time. So it's pretty easy to, to hold on to that. Say it ain't so mentality. <laughs> that's, that's a little segment over there. Um, say it ain't so what, what, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, then there are the early screen printing adopters to DTG that were, let's be honest, they were, they were disappointed with the results. Uh, it, it, this is an industry still really in its infancy, but early, early on, it was, uh, uh, you know, it, it was like buying a car at the turn of the previous century. <laughs> you know, you, you, you had to be a bit of a mechanic to own that, uh, that early car. <laughs> oh yeah. And I, and I was, and I was riding by you on my horse <laughs> and, and while you were sitting under the hood trying to crank in there. <laughs> yeah, trying to fix it. No, I could totally relate. I, I mean, you're right. And I thank you for bringing that up. Those early days, those were some pioneer days, right? You guys were trailblazing. I think, I think of uh, the good old days of, of uh, U.S. Screen Print Institute and Technology, Inkjet Technology. Did I, I fumbled that, didn't I? But uh, what did yeah, you guys? The, U.S. Screen Printing, uh, what was U.S. Screen Printing Institute for and 
and, ink and, technology and ink tech technology that's what it was anyway yeah, we're, we're, we're it picking got a little on our, convoluted but we're uh, picking on our buddy scott fresner but you know what um it, it was an interesting uh, development you know he, again here's another forward thinking uh, I, I use the word renegade in a positive way like a like a like a trailblazer a pioneer right. who saw an emerging technology and was not afraid to embrace it not saying well, well, maybe he did say even, Terry, correct me if I'm wrong. It was, wasn't there a story where he would say, I think screen printing's gone. We're never going to screen print again or some, oh, some yeah. version oh, of that. Oh, absolutely. He would say that to the screen printing classes. People would come from all over the country and and he, he would say screen print will be completely gone in three years. And before he could leave the room, because I actually taught the classes, uh, I'd say that's, that is completely incorrect. <laughs> and he would laugh and walk away and Years later, he came up to me at a trade show and he says, you know, you were right. Uh, screen printing is not going anywhere. So, but, so it's uh, fair that there are some screen printers that are still resistant. But but what are some of those underlying reasons? And, and are those is that logic still true is the question maybe I would I would ask. I, I think it's not true anymore. And, and, and you know, Jay, uh, in addition, there there's screen printers will also say, but you know, what I do is so, so versatile. Uh, there, I, I can print on just about any substrate. There are all kinds of ink treatments. I mean, I just did a, I just did a seminar. Uh-oh, <laughs> you just did a seminar and then you froze. Terry, you're the talent. You can't freeze. You can't go away. <laughs> we have not had it in Kansas City a couple of weeks ago that uh, that I did an hour and a half seminar just talking about uh, specialty inks and, oh, and okay. screen printing and, and just one after another. And and so, uh, I, you know, part of it, screen printers think that, you know, I've got all these opportunities over here on this side to do lots of different things. And and yes, uh, direct to garment printing is is a little more limited in the substrates you decorate. And hey, there's no puff ink, there's no gel ink over here, mm -hmm. but there's a place for it for the screen printer. And that's the important thing. Gotcha. Great, great point. So we're not going to pick on them all day long, nor, nor will we, uh, we, we recognize that some are slow to change. Some may never change. That's okay. Um, we accept them all. There's plenty of room in our big tent, but we do, we do encourage you to look at this emerging technology. And really that was one of the reasons, Terry, that I wanted to have this session was to figure out ways that the two would complement each other. So I truly hope that as we end this webinar and round the corner and slide into home, that people will feel like, okay, I can see how these two can, can coexist and work well and complement each other together. So we'll see. Exactly. Jury's still out. We've only finished question two <laughs> and, and we've got four more to go. So question number three, are, are all screen printers then, are they all capable of these high-end full color, full photorealistic images, these, these, what are these terms, these uh, uh, four color process and simulated process, can they all do that, Terry, or? or... Yeah, those, the, those, those uh, rock concert, black t-shirts with a picture of the band, yeah, not so much. Uh... <laughs> kind of tough you know? is what you're saying. Exactly, exactly. In my screen printing classes, I always I always do a simulated process, a five color print, just so that people walk out the door knowing that that they are capable of doing that. But you know, Jay, the bread and butter for the screen printer has been and is still one, two, and three color work. Jim's towing service phone number on the back. That's that's where that's the sweet spot for screen printing. And and but the number of screen printers with uh with further capability of those photographic images uh, is limited. And, and partly because in the past that that uh, marketplace was also a little more limited. It, yes, it costs more money to, to, to the consumer to buy that product. So mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to be in that one and two and three color uh, arena. But, you know, Jay, the, there are decorators that all they do is simulated process. And for, for uh, you know, our listeners who may not know, simulated process is basically taking a photographic image and, and printing it on, on a garment using solid, opaque plastisol inks and, and, um, and simulating or, or tricking the eye to make the eye believe that all these different colors exist by printing halftone dots with, with plastisol ink. But, but, um, the, the number of decorators who do that type of work is limited. And, and Jay, I, I think it's going to become a lost art because wow. even large decorators uh, who can do that type of thing can look at, at something like direct to garment and say, gosh, you know, uh, the technologies are not the same, but with a button click, 
I can do a photographic image on a black or a navy or a red shirt. Right. And, and, and maybe, maybe I want to focus my energies elsewhere rather than uh, setting up six and eight color prints and, uh, and, 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 and then fighting from our earlier question, fighting the, the lower quantities that people are asking for Correct. within that, within that, uh, that printing category. So. so, so let me put you on the spot, just your opinion. So it's not, it's fair. It's, it's not, you know, the gospel, although this is being recorded and it will be on the internet. So, you know, forever. everything on the internet forever is going to be true. But what's your opinion on comparing a, a, a high-end shop that can really master that, that, you know, four color process or even simulated process where they're, where they're doing six, seven, eight, you know, colors to, to look like a photograph or a high-end graphic how how if you had the same image would you think that you would get superior results on the dtg printer or somebody who really knows what they're doing with a with a simulated process setup you're still going to get a, a a a more photographic realistic look with dtg because a uh, a screen printer is still printing it with a photographic image usually a 55 line dot uh, on the high end a 65 line dot that for, for anybody who knows art, that's still a pretty big dot that you're looking at. And if you look really, really closely at that image, you're going to see all those little dots. Uh, with with, um, with direct-to-garment printing, it, it is a realistically photographic image that, that you're going to see on the shirt. Now, there, there, there are certainly people who, who like the look of that. Again, I'm going to sure. go back to that rock and roll t-shirt. You know, right, right, the, right. No doubt. Uh, and, and so that look is something that some people are going to want to go for. You know what? You can do that with DTG as well. Um, the, we created a filter when I was at US Screen for all those screen printers to do mock-ups on their DTG printer by using images with 55 line dots in them. And 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 that, what that did for them was- I didn't was, know that. That's cool. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, it was quite innovative for the screen printer because the screen printer could do a, a, a longer run and then come back and fill in those those five extra smalls that the customer forgot to order <laughs> on a DTG printer, but with all those same half tone dots. Oh so, man! And avoid yeah. all of that drama and new setup and new sizes for the extra small. I might add. Exactly. Um, wow. Okay, that's cool. We'll have to have that conversation offline, and you can. I'd like to figure out maybe maybe something we could show in the future. But in the meantime, yeah. in the meantime, I, I love this conversation and I love that question. Thank you for for answering. So so may may I say and is it fair to summarize that? In other words, the inkjet technology that little that little drop of ink that's dropping onto the shirt is significantly smaller than the dot that's being pressed through a screen. Is that fair? It, it, exactly right. And, and with an Epson printer, those dots are variable dots, meaning they are different sizes. Within the space of one dot, there might be four or eight or 16 dots to really get. Uh, and, and since the first Epson DTG printer to the current DTG printers, you get about 10% more color variation by using those variable dots. So something that's virtually impossible to do with screen printing. Hmm. Man, this guy knows a lot. I'm glad you're here, Terry. <laughs> okay, so let's keep going. We've got question number four staring at us and, and we're about 23 minutes after the hour. So we're doing great on time. Um, number four, what trends, Mr. Combs, have you witnessed in, in what customers are looking for over the past years? What are the trends? Well, what are you seeing? Well, one thing I want to mention is something that Tim, who, who couldn't be with us today, um, talked about when we initially had the conversation about doing this webinar. And that was in, in his experience over the past couple of years, uh, the number of people who wanted that simulated process, full color, photographic, realistic print might've been one per month a couple of years ago. And to the point where they were getting two or three customers a week asking for that, that look. And, and I believe that's totally driven by the number of people who are doing photographic reproduction with direct-to-garment printing and, and people seeing it in the marketplace and not necessarily knowing um, how that was accomplished. All they know right. is, hey, I want that, I want that photographic look. I want more garments. colors. I want full color. I want all exactly. the colors. Right. Okay, and, I see. And, I see. Yeah. And, and you to trend wise, Jay, 
Uh, I, as an instructor in screen printing classes, uh, my classes still sell out. Um, this, often there's a waiting list to get in the class. So screen printer is not going anywhere, but at, at the same time in my classes, it is very common for someone to sit there and say, well, I'm already doing DTG and I want to add screen printing, which is a, a different twist on what this conversation is we're having. Unbelievable. Um, That's like the oh, reverse, oh, I, right? I, absolutely. What? And, and I, virtually every class I have, somebody is a DTG decorator who wants to add the long run capability of screen printing to Very their, cool. to, to what they do. Embroiderers, uh, contract decorators uh, who come, who come to the classes. So, so what I've witnessed over, uh, you know, I've been teaching screen printing classes for about 20 years. Uh, what, what I've seen is going from, I'm going to be a screen printer to one of the technologies I use is screen printing. One of the technologies I use is direct to garment mm -hmm. printing. One of the technologies that I use is sublimation. So it, it, there's been a, there's been a, a transition to multiple technologies uh, in, in, and I'm going to say most garment decorating shops today. So what you're saying, Terry, is there's no magic wand. I keep waiting for that magic machine that does it all. <laughs> Where, where's that machine? Yeah. And, and you know, it is funny that uh, fewer and fewer people are asking that question because, you know, Jay, early on, as you know, uh, there would be people who would say, I want a machine that does everything. I want to print on on 100% uh, cotton shirts. I want to print on 50-50s. I want to print on tumblers. I want to print on hats. I want to print on Frisbees. Yeah, that machine doesn't, nor will it ever exist. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that's good to know. I also think there's a, been a resurgence of the, what I call the DIY or the artisan or the the craftsperson, the maker, sure. people people are really enjoying that. And so maybe that's been part of the trend of getting back into um, four color manual screen printing. You know, they feel like the, they're making something, they're, they're building something. I, I know I, I appreciate that. I really do. And we've had that conversation sure. before between the difference between the marketer and the maker. You know, there's a lot of businesses that are getting into DTG printing because they they understand the marketing game behind the e-commerce push, and they and they see that as a faster, cleaner on ramp than say screen printing. So interesting. And, and you know, Jay, I, I love the crafter out there, and always have because uh, those you know, as a professional screen printer, you know, being somebody that can make a living screen printing. Um, that's the, you, you mentioned on-ramp, that, that is the on-ramp, uh, going from crafter to someone who says, you know, I really love doing this. I, I, I'm not going to sell insurance by day and, and print t-shirts by night anymore. I'm going to be a garment decorator. And, and uh, that's the, the, the crafting world, which is exploding, as you know, and there, there are more and more crafting type shows yeah. out there. Oh my gosh. That, that's, that's just, uh, a, a, you know, to use your phrase again, it's the on-ramp to someone becoming a professional garment or product decorator. So we'd love those guys. Yeah, I, I, had a, I had a buddy that years ago who used to sell uh, screen printing equipment. He goes, man, I love the you do. And I'm like, you, the you do from Michael's uh, yeah. craft store. Right? And he goes, yeah, because out of every hundred of those people, one of them goes, I want to do this for real. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I was thinking about the conversation of, "Hey, Dad, I'm going to be a roadie. I'm going on the road. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go. We're touring. The band is going to tour. You know." And it's like, <laughs> yeah. but you know what? For those that jump in and are and are gifted and persistent and have a have a niche, which we often talk about, have some kind of a plan. You know, they they do well and they enjoy the ride. So I, I get it, and I do I do appreciate that mentality too. I'm not quite the screen printer I used to be. I've 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 since hung up my squeegees, Terry, and uh, I, I much prefer the inkjet technology. I have to admit, I'm pretty much biased to the uh, to the other, but I recognize the craftiness of it and the, and the artisan side of it. So, interesting times. So, okay, well, we have another question, so let's get moving. We've got uh, number five coming up, and uh, so we're we're kind of heading to third just before we round third and head to home. And now that Combs. the strikes, and now that the lockout's over, that's right. We're back, to, <laughs> we're back to baseball. Thank goodness our economy here in Arizona loves that. Um, a, but but fact. Terry, have you seen the resistance to production costs? You know, and and if you have seen that, is is it more or less? And then what do you With think about that? Yeah, oh. uh, it, it, that's interesting. That's an interesting question. Um, new decorators, somebody who's never printed shirts before, 
or products before, they, they seem overly conscious of the DTG production cost, you know. So, so what does it cost a pre-treated shirt? How, what's the ink cost for a, for a DTG print? And yeah, yeah. How, how, and, much, and, how much is four milliliters of pre-treatment going to cost? You? <laughs> exactly. But a screen printer is much less resistant to production costs because they live production costs every single day because uh, for a screen printer, uh, and again, for anybody who, who's not a screen printer, there, there's there's a lot of steps in the prep work before you ever print a shirt. You've, you've got your screen prep, you, you're, you're degreasing your screens, you're outputting film positives, a film for every color in the graphic. You are, uh, you're coating that screen with emulsion. You, you have chemicals you're using to clean up the screen afterwards. The time to accomplish that task. I mean, it's it, it's a big it's a big window of of prep time before you can ever decorate a shirt. So so I think a screen printer is more accepting of the per unit expense of producing a garment because they know what's involved in in before I ever pull or push my squeegee. They they know that there was a, a pretty substantial expense to get there. Mm -hmm. And so a screen printer can look and say, okay, so a uh, on an F2100 uh, for a full front image on a black t-shirt, that ink cost might be $2. A screen printer can look at that and say, well, you know, as a screen printer, my, my ink cost is probably more like eight cents, but I, I, I was able to go to that machine, load my image without any separation or anything, hit the print button and start printing a shirt. And, and all of a sudden that $2 feels like not very much money. Well, yeah, because they're that. they're comparing it to all of that setup before exactly. they ever printed one shirt. They might, I mean, look, our friend Marshall Atkinson, a full-time consultant, literally teaching people how to be more efficient at that process. There are people doing this for full time. This is how he feeds his family, pays his mortgage to right. train people, to teach people just, just the setup, not even the how to print. You know, that's where Terry come, comes come in. But you know, that all that setup, all those logistics. I mean, I'm not saying you couldn't do it, Terry. I'm just saying it strikes me as that's how complicated and that's how many steps there are before you ever get to, okay, now pull the squeegee. How's your off contact? Is your angle correct? Okay, mm -hmm. lift up the screen. Ta-da, I did it, mom. You know, there, there could have well, been yeah, two yeah. hours, it, two hours of work before you even oh, got to that. Yeah, and 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 it's it's the wait time too. I mean, you de you degrease the screen and wait for it to dry. You coat the screen, you wait for it to dry. You expose the screen, wash it out, wait for it to dry. <laughs> so uh, it, it's a it can be a a long process, and you have to be efficient about what you do. And and you know, I teach things like double your production in thirty days for screen printers, and it's all about that window before you ever pull or push the squeegee. Uh, I teach uh, about estimating production production time to, for, for screen printers to have an understanding of how long did it really take me to produce those 24 shirts or their 2,400 yes, shirts. So right. uh, with direct to garment printing, it, it, it's, it's very clean and simple to understand. It, it's right there in front of your face. It, here's, there's there's here's not, a lot, a, not a lot of extra calculating to do in, <laughs> in direct to say, garment printing. You beat me to it. I, I can do this math. My math, <laughs> my math is like, how many times can I press the blue button in the two hours that I would have been setting up those screens? And I think I could probably get about 40 shirts out in an hour. Um, you know, so I'm a hundred shirts ahead before you've pulled the squeegee the first time. Right, so. right, exactly. And and your your efficiency efficiency lies in getting your art ready to send. And by gosh, how long does it take me to get that shirt on there straight? There, yeah. that, that's that's the efficiency. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, oh, by the way, I did 18 different versions of those shirts, you know. So exactly. I mean, yeah, Everyone so, has so, a different name on them. Yeah, I personalize them. I have different locations. I have different graphics, different name drops. So yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to stick with the uh, the DTG camp. I think I made that point. I'm a little you biased. Very stuff. clear. Very clear. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's okay. I love, I love screen printers. Don't get me wrong. That's where I came from. That's my heritage. That's my background. I still enjoy it. I just recognize so many new efficiencies that, uh, anyway, it's not about me. It's not about, it's about these questions. So, okay. Awesome. I love that. I love that you talked about that process, the costs and all the multiple setups. And you talked about your, it seems like you're always waiting, you're waiting to get to that next step. And so we, we don't feel that as much. There's a little bit, right? There's a little bit like heat press or popping that shirt on the dryer, but it's a little less cumbersome. Is that Right. Fair to say, exactly Fair? right. It's just it, it 
it's, you know, the, the beauty of direct to garment printing, you know, learning wise, and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, is the process is exactly the same every single time. Whereas in screen printing, there's so many variables involved in the process. So um, you can be an expert DTG printer in 30 to 90 days, a, a, a true expert at that craft. Mm, I love that. I'm, thank goodness, because that's that's about where I need to be, Terry. Let's keep it real. Let's keep, <laughs> keeping it simple. Keep it. Keep That's it your for, attention span on this. Huh? That's right. Jade, <laughs> I'm distracted. What? Shiny? Huh? Okay. All right. We're, we're here. We go. Last question, Terry Combs. Do you think that there's a future partnership of these two technologies, where screen printing and DTG printing will not only coexist but they will flourish together? How do you see this happening? Are you seeing it more? Are you seeing it less? What's your What's your take on that? It's more and more and more, Jay. I, I tell screen printers in my screen printing classes, if you're not right now doing some type of uh, uh, of uh, technology like like direct to garment, if you're not doing it now, you will be. It's an it's an inevitable marriage of necessity. The the shorter runs, the online sales that have become such a big part of every decorator's life, the, those those orders that you cringe when you got the family reunion, you know. And Jay, I've told this story a thousand times. You know, somebody walks in and says, "I have a family reunion." You're like, "Please have 150 people in your family." As a screen printer, you no, know, 17, and, and little Susie, she's a 2T, and everybody's got an Uncle Bob, right? Uncle Bob's a 4X. And, oh, and, I was going 3x. Okay, <laughs> that was that was before COVID, Jay. Uncle Bob's been at home, oh, man, <laughs> eating oh, man. bunions and, uh, no and watching Netflix. No <laughs> but uh, and, and and you know, Jay, screen printing has always been a a very reliable decoration method. Once you once you became expert at it, once you learned how to properly do all the steps, all the different mm -hmm. uh, parts of the process correctly and efficiently, it's very reliable and you know what you're gonna get. Uh, early on, direct-to-garment printing wasn't that, but now today with commercial printers like the, the Epson F2100 or the Epson F3070, DTG printing is now that consistent, reliable decoration method that a screen printer has been used to. Yeah. So now, the technology makes much more sense to the screen printer because it, it, it's something that I'm going to walk in the door and I'm going to be able to decorate shirts just like over here in my manual or automatic screen printing press. I'm going to walk over to the, the DTG machine and be able to have that same consistency and reliability that I'm used to. Love that. I love I'm reminded of our good friend, our buddy, Jeff Baxter. We had several conversations with Jeff and, and I was reminded when he said, you know, it's not by chance that these massive major manufacturers, um, I'll just go ahead and say their names because it doesn't matter. MNR, Cornet, Brock, some of these major, huge, big time companies, they're all trying to figure out how to better perfect this blend, this merge. They're trying to figure out a hybrid process. They've done it. And, and to some degree it works and and for some people it's a good solution probably not most of the people we're talking to but right. you know you've seen that in the last two three four years you've seen this when i started seeing that technology on the manufacturing side of them trying to figure out how to do maybe a base that's plastisol and everything else on top of it cmyk or a, a machine that does both at the same time or you know it's like wow you really do see this as an emerging um, technology where the two strengths could possibly play together and come together. I don't know. What are your exactly. thoughts? Exactly. And, and our, our good friend, Jeff Baxter has his name on one of those patents where, where they're trying to merge um, screen printing and, and DTG uh, that, you know, and, and, and partly from what I said before, by using the DTG portion for what used to be that simulated process uh, part of the job where, where they, they were using six, eight, 12 screens uh now they're they're printing a white underbase they're flashing it they're they're using dtg to print that image on top and and, and much like early dtg i think that 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 technology uh has a little ways to go they're mm -hmm. they're still feeling their way along to make it work but but uh, integrating dtg and screen printing is certainly something that's going to be happening in the future and and hopefully on a smaller scale but but uh in the meantime yeah, uh, and, and and I don't think that that's going to do away with 
the, uh, the, the shop that has screen printing over here and DTG over there. I think that's still going to exist uh, now and forever. Oh, I agree. I agree too. And I also think it's fun to see um, what little we do get to see behind the curtain. But when working with a multi-billion dollar global company like Epson, hey, they're dedicated to R&D. They're trying to figure out better, faster, you know, cheaper, bigger, you know, they're, they're also looking for efficiencies and how to, how to create a, 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 you know, for lack of a better term, a build a better mousetrap. So um, it, it, it would not surprise me to see new technologies within two to three years, you know, and, and so for us, it's exciting because we get to see, hey, look, we, now we can do 60 shirts an hour, full size um, on dark garments. And, and that was pretty tough four years ago. You know, I mean, let's just compare the F2000 to the F3070. What, what, what a transformation, what a, what a huge increase in, in production and efficiency and technology and, and print costs. Yeah. Right. And the costs come down and the inks are less expensive. And so, I mean, Epson is definitely in the forefront and is a leader and we're, we're, you know, obviously we're, we're, uh, I don't have any tattoos of Epson on my body, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I am biased and I'm a pretty big fan. So, well, they, they are, you know, Epson is um, the, the number one producer of print heads in the world and the number one producer of direct to garment printers in the world. So that says a little, little bit about Epson's commitment to this technology. It sure does. Well, listen, Terry, you did a wonderful job. Thank you so much for sharing your answers and your insights. And, and it was great that you sprinkled a little bit of Tim Allen in there. Um, we'll have Tim on another one so that we can maybe ask some different kinds of questions, but he had a great perspective that he was willing to share as well um, because of his recent connections to screen printing. So um, I, I, I'm just thrilled with the answers. Uh, I get re-energized when I think about, you know, that, that there are a lot of screen printing and apparel decorators looking to embrace and take advantage of this new technology in DTG screen printing. So let's wrap up with this. Um, we, we don't need to spend too much time on it, Terry, but you'll remember um, this will both serve as a, as a reminder and as a teaser. So we had an, an amazing opportunity to talk about um, apparel trends and our good friends at Screen Printing Magazine had um, partnered with Keypoint Intelligence and done a survey specifically asking hundreds of screen printers, hey, what are the top factors you consider when you're purchasing or when you purchased your DTG printer? And we were all shocked by this. You know, Tara, if you remember, we were both like, wow, check that out. You know, purchasing price is number four. That was the first thing I was. <laughs> Same with me. I was it, looking at. Yeah. You know, and Jay, and when you look at this, uh, then it starts making sense when you think that, yes, this survey was done of screen printers. And so what's number one, what's the number one thing they're looking for with DTG is print quality. How is this going to compare with what I'm already selling to my customer, which we talked about before and, mm -hmm. and, and ease of use. Uh, I think, I think more what they're saying here is as, as a screen printer who saw, saw direct to government printing early on was, is it going to take me an, an hour or two to get this machine ready to run every single morning? I, I think that's part of ease of use. So yeah, um, yeah, definitely. So and then of course, you know, print speed, how is this going to compare with what we normally do in our, uh, yeah. in our production days? So uh, I was surprised too by by the responses, especially like you said, the the cost of of operating the machine. But the more I looked at it, the more I thought this makes perfect sense from the mindset of a screen printer. Yeah, it does. And and the fact that um, right after purchase price was service after the sale, the warranty side of it, and and knowing that that was rounding out the top five. So. Um, I think we do know our market. I think we we can look in the mirror and say, yeah, I was that guy or am still that guy or gal. And I think it's important that, um, you know, we we have these types of dialogues. And I'm grateful that we were able to spend the time to, today. And thank you again for your time. Love that, um, that little shout out to uh, Screen Printing Magazine. So my teaser is we're working for the end of this month, we're working on an apparel trends session. And Screen Printing is going to be part of that as well as we have a, a futurist 
and a trend analyst, a trend analyst. Did I say that right? Yeah, trend analyst. Um, Vicky Ostrom from Sanmar, Jeremy Picker from uh, Amber Creative. And, and so we've got some people for color and fashion, styles and apparel and decorating trends. And so that's a future webinar coming up in a couple of weeks. So Screen Printing Magazine is going to be our, our media partner and uh, and we'll be involved as well. So I'm uh, looking forward to that. So, uh, you know, I can't wait to see that one myself. And I know that that all the current garment decorators out there, that's 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 the kind of information that they love to see. And uh, and I'm sure that uh, we'll have lots of uh, lots of folks uh, in the comments uh, discussing and all the points are being brought up. And, I and hope so. And we, that's will, a, we will. And that's an all star cast, Jay. It is an all-star cast. I'm, I feel I feel grateful and lucky to be able to moderate it. But uh, the the experts are definitely the subject matter experts that we're going to have with Vicky and and Adrian and Jeremy. But um, but uh, yeah. So back to us. We're wrapping up. Thank you everybody again for attending today. If you need us, we're a click away. Um, literally, you can go to our tech support page. Go to our home page. Um, look for tech support. So if you're a previous owner and you're looking to get back into it, or you somehow magically have inherited an F2100 and we didn't sell it to you, or um, you purchased it from somebody else, you didn't get the support and the love that you thought you were going to get, or maybe you just hired new employees and you need a brush up, you need a new training. We, we've we've added some training to this so you, you, you can reach out, start a tech ticket, and um, just talk to us, you know, let's, let's at least have a discussion. We'll figure out if we can help you and, and we'll be upfront and honest with you. If there's, if there's something there, let's talk about it. And if not, Hey, we'll part ways friends, but uh, we're a click away. Also our YouTube channel, uh, Terry, we're pretty proud of this because we have over a hundred uh, training webinars now on our YouTube channel. And that's a big deal. So for the last, really the last four years now, uh, we've been chipping away at this with a lot of training and a lot of insights um, a lot of subject matter experts being able to have our tech team uh, help us with this training. So please subscribe. Um, you can you can also click that little bell. That way you get a notification anytime we upload any new videos. And this one will be recorded and probably up on our YouTube channel in the next 48 hours. And then, of course, final slide, Terry, if people need to reach us, where should they go? Well, you can call our toll-free number, 800-408-0040. Of course, our website, equipmentzone.com. And there are some of our sales staff uh, listed with our email addresses. We'd love to hear from you, even if uh, it's just a question about what we've talked about today. So feel free to reach out. Awesome. All right. Well, that's all we've got for you. Thank you again. Appreciate everybody's time. Thank you, Terry and Equipment Zone. Uh, another successful training webinar to add to our YouTube channel. We'll talk to you soon. See you, everybody. Bye, everybody.